And if you need extra motivation, the Grad Fund at Strayer University can help push you forward. Because up to your last year of classes, be on us. That's right, on us. Today is the day. Strayer University. Let's get it, America. ABC 7 News at 11 starts now with breaking news. And that breaking news tonight, Hurricane Maria has now become a Category 5 storm with 160 mile per hour winds. It is a huge storm. Many of the islands now in the storm's path already were devastated by Hurricane Irma. And mm. now they are bracing for yet another hit. That's right. So the 11 o'clock update from the National Hurricane Center just came in moments ago. Let's get over to Stormwatch 7 meteorologist Josh Knight for the latest. Josh? Guys, Maria is still a Category 5 storm with winds around 160 miles per hour. But we're not just talking about Maria. Of course, closer to us, closer to the Mid-Atlantic, there's Jose as well. But let's start off with the incredibly powerful and uh, incredibly quickly gaining strength Maria. We'll notice the center of that storm just working its way across Dominica, making it an official Category 5 landfall tonight. What happened? Hurricane hunters were flying through the storm, got through just before it made landfall, and were able to clock those winds at 160 miles an hour. With it overland, they won't actually fly right through the center of the eye, but expected to do so again as it does get beyond the island. Gusting up to 195 miles per hour, and along with the wind, of course, you've got heavy rain and storm surge to be an issue as well. Let's put a track on this. We've got our Category five making its way over to Puerto Rico as a four still 145 mile an hour winds and with the rain mudslides also a problem. Let's continue this track northward as a category three moving just off to the east side of the Bahamas. Of course there's Jose as well. We'll get a closer look at the latest track on that coming up in just a bit. Okay Josh we'll see you then and as we mentioned residents in Maria's path are now racing to get themselves ready for the storm. Yeah the storm could grow even stronger before it slams into the British Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. And Lindsay Masters right now is tracking the situation for us. And Lindsay, I can't even imagine what these folks are up against. They've already had, in some cases, they've lost everything and they're staying in makeshift shelters. Absolutely. And not to mention that this one escalated so fast that it's a race against time to prepare. People in Puerto Rico are boarding up their homes and businesses, but there's a different hazard, which is a direct result from the previous hurricane. Residents are being asked to use anything they can that's heavy, including rocks, to weigh down debris. All of the debris that's piled up uh, behind me, we're worried about that becoming projectiles. We cannot afford to be complacent, so we need to pull out all the stops and prepare for an impact, just in case. Puerto Rico is expecting a direct hit for the very first time in 85 years. The governor there has already declared a state of emergency and we'll keep you posted as we find out more. Jonathan. All right, Lindsay, thanks very much. A dire situation obviously there, but do stay on top of things. You can always go to our website, WJLA.com and get the very latest, not only on news, but also on weather. Allison. This is Jay Corf from ABC 7 Satellite Center with more breaking news. A massive crowd of protesters gathered outside the St. Louis Justice Center chanting, quote, this is not a joke. And this is the fourth night of protests to support those arrested Sunday. In all, more than 100 people have been arrested after peaceful protests erupted in some cases in violence. These clashes were sparked by the recent acquittal of a white police officer in the shooting death of a black suspect. Now, several years ago, then-cop Jason Stockley claimed self-defense after shooting and killing Lamar Smith following a police chase and crash. The judge in that case ruled recently the state did not prove their case. In the Satellite Center, Jay Korf, ABC 7 News. All right, Jay, thanks. And some breaking news out of Atlanta, Georgia. That's where students at Georgia Tech now are being told to stay inside after violent protests broke out there. And a police cruiser, as you see here, was lit on fire. Now, the protests come a day after the death of Scott Schultz, a student who authorities say was holding a knife and was confronting police. They shot and killed him. There was a vigil on campus today honoring Schultz. This is a developing situation, and do stay with ABC7 for updates as soon as we get them into our newsroom. Meanwhile, breaking closer to home, an arrest after a wild series of crashes and a carjacking in Alexandria and Fairfax County. It started with a hit-and-run crash. It was right along 495 in Alexandria. Police say the driver got out, 
and then carjacked a VDOT truck that had stopped to help. That truck then hit another car on 95 before the driver got out and started running. Police arrested him a short time later on Back Lake Road. No one was seriously hurt. New at 11 o'clock, neighbors are demanding change on a very dangerous stretch of road. In fact, AAA says that the Prince George's County part of 210 is one of the deadliest roads in the D.C. area. Tom Rousey live in Fort Washington for us tonight. And Tom, what are they planning to do about this, if anything? Uh, well, one thing, they promise you're going to see them out here tomorrow. You know, this stretch of, of, of this road behind me here on Indian Head Highway, it's on pace for possibly one of its deadliest years ever. And police say one of the big issues is that speed limit over there, people treat it like it's a minimum. Over the last 10 years, about 60 people have died on this section of Indian Head Highway. We don't want our next 10 years to look like this. Tonight in Fort Washington, dozens came to see what can be done. It's really terrible. I see people texting, speeding. Police say last Monday they pulled over 49 cars in seven hours. Of those 49 vehicles, one vehicle was doing 100 miles an hour. The average speed, 78. AAA says there's no question the Prince George's part of 210 is one of the deadliest roads in the D.C. area. The only roadway that would probably compete with it would be Vera Mill Road in Montgomery County. The worst incident on 210 happened when eight people watching a drag race were killed in Akakeek nine years ago. But most of those who've died here have been in cars or on motorcycles. We're constantly running that light. Meeting organizers called on more police enforcement and higher fines for traffic violations. Anything that would help would, would be appreciated. So again, Prince George's County Police said they will be out here doing traffic enforcement tomorrow. In addition, they're going to be meeting with Maryland State Police to talk about what they can do together to try to fight against this very, very tragic issue going.